Hey YouTube, it's Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, here again with another electronic drum video. Today we're going to be talking all about the ATV XD3 electronic drum module. I have mine hooked up to my drum set behind me, and I absolutely love this drum module. I was recently looking for an upgrade to my old TD6, and I considered a few different modules, and I settled on the ATV uh, XD3 because of number one, the price, and number two, just the quality of sounds that are inside of the drum module. Now, before we get started on this video though, I just wanted to talk about something uh, regarding this video and future videos on this channel. Now on my YouTube channel, there are several product review videos and this video, I guess could be considered a product review, but really this is just something that I wanted and I purchased myself and I figured I would share uh, with you guys all the different features of the module in case you were considering one yourself. Uh, that might help you make an informed decision. Now, I am going to start moving away from doing uh, too many product reviews on this channel. Even though I do believe that, you know, making reviews is a useful thing to do and it helps people out, I feel like that there's too much consumerism in the world in general. Uh, and maybe, you know, I kind of just want to start, you know, kind of enforcing this idea of people should use what they have. For example, maybe you already have an electronic drum set you already have a drum module, maybe you should just learn how to use the one you have before you consider purchasing a new one. Um, you know, I know I just said that I bought a new one, but that being said, I did use that TD6 for quite a while, did a lot of live streams with it, and I liked it quite a bit. It's just that I wanted something that kind of responded a little better, you know, a little more realistic when I was playing that I didn't have to hook up to Easy Drummer or something like that. So that's why I upgraded my module. But with all of that being said, I think I really just want to focus more on education, you know, teaching you guys some drum lessons, as well as producing creative content on this channel, which I have always done. Now, will I be completely stopping doing product reviews? Most likely not but it's going to be more of a uh, selective thing that I'm gonna be doing, and usually only things that I personally have an interest in, uh, not so much things that people want to send me uh, just to review, which I have done a lot of those. But, you know, I will say that every review I've ever done on this channel has been honest. I've never tried to, you know, persuade people to buy things, you know, just to buy them. You know, I always try to give my honest opinion. Uh, but that being said, Use what you have, you know, take a look around, see uh, if you already have some drum stuff, you know, just try to get better at using what you already have because that can make a big difference. Anyway, that being said, let's go ahead and talk about this ATV XD3 drum module. Now what I'm gonna do is actually show you all the different features that it has, how you can install new drum kits, as well as how you can build your own drum kits using the ATV website and you know using easy drummer or superior drummer and using the usb functions and basically everything that it can do so let's go ahead and get started all right so here's the module turned on and loaded up and it's already hooked up to my drums uh, but first off before i show you the back panel and, and all the hookups and everything let's go over everything that's in the actual uh, menu and the way that this module functions so when you first buy it uh, all you're going to have are five kits and those could be selected by using these buttons here on the front panel. So you'll see one, two, three, four, five. And uh, it's not a lot. You know, you only get five out of the box, but don't fear, you can install a lot more. I think there's nine more free kits on the website. And then you can build your own. And I'm gonna show you how to do that uh, using the ATV website as well. And uh, so you can actually get quite a bit in here once you start messing with it. I have 20 kits loaded on mine right now. And the way to see all of them is if we go here to list, and now I can scroll through all of my different kits. So you can see I have 20 in here right now. And uh, all of these can be assigned, any of these 20 kits can be assigned to the quick load buttons, the five buttons here on the front by selecting that kit. So if I select four on the floor, and then if I were to hold down any one of these buttons, it'll assign it to that uh, shortcut button. So all I, all, all I would have to do is hold this down for like five seconds and then four on the floor would be assigned to number one. I'm not gonna do that though because I already have this set up the way I want it. And uh, all around her, this is actually a custom kit that I made. And I'll show you how to do that, like I said, here in a little while. So that's the front panel as far as the, uh, you know, loading the kits, it's really, really simple. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, let's go into the menu here. 
So right here under enter, you'll also see it says menu. And if we go into here, you'll see uh, various things that you can choose from. So number one, we have song. So let's go ahead and uh, select song. Now song, there's 20 songs that you can select uh, and play to of various uh, categories. We have acid jazz, ballads, funk, fusion, jazz, metal, pop, and rock. And I will say that these songs are actually really fun to play to. Most of the time, like on every other drum module I've ever had, uh, the built-in songs are always pretty cheesy and just, you know, in my opinion, kind of useless. But I actually like playing to these uh, because they sound good. Uh, you know, they're not like the greatest songs in the world or anything like that, but they're well recorded and they're a lot of fun to play to. And plus, you can also like basically get a roadmap as to the song by looking at this screen. As you play, let's go ahead and play one. You're not going to hear it right now because it's going through the headphones. But it's actually, maybe you'll hear that a little bit. It's playing and like this is like your timeline. And as that timeline progresses and it reaches these numbers, that'll tell you basically when the next change is coming. So you can kind of watch this screen, even if it's the first time you're playing, and kind of get an idea as to where it's going to change. You can also do markers, which I haven't messed with yet, and I think looping, so you can loop a certain section if you wanted to do that as well. And all of that is really cool. You know, the songs are great. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play to. It's a great way to practice, just sit down and play to some music which is also uh, a very helpful way just to get better at drums. Now, in addition to the songs that are built in, you can also load your own songs using the SD card, uh, which I have already installed in mine. I don't have any of my own songs on there yet, but you can drop uh, WAV files in the root directory of the SD card and then play them right through the module and play along to them. So that is really, really cool. Um, all right, let's move on to the next function here which is the metronome function, uh, very useful. Now, metronome has various functions here. You can select your beat, which will basically uh, enable you to change the time signature. So if I wanted to, well, I don't know why I'm starting at the second thing. Let's talk about tempo first. So tempo is your tempo. Uh, you could set that using, uh, you could just press enter and use the knob here to adjust the tempo, or you could tap the tempo by using button five right here. So if I just tap that, that will set my tempo that way. Uh, you can also go over here to select your beat. And if we do that, it's going to select, you know, which, how many beats it's going to click. And that basically is another way of saying time signature. So if I set this to five, then I'll have five, four, six, six, eight, uh, whatever, you know. Um, that's basically how that works. All right, so let's exit out of there. Note is the type of metronome note type. Am I, am I even talking right? No type. So if you want to select eighth notes or quarter notes or 16th notes or even triplets, you could do that here. So three for triplets, eighth notes for eighth notes, half note, whole note even. Be pretty weird to play to a whole note metronome. I don't know why you want to do that, but you can if you want to. So let's exit out of there. You can also select the sound, metronome sound right here, and the level, and then start with control off. That, I actually don't know what that means. Um, sorry, I haven't looked that up yet. Um, I'm sure it's in the manual and I'll list it on the screen. I'll just write it on text on the screen. Oh, I can press help here. So if I, if I press help right here, um, you can also select the, that's not help. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay, so uh, start with CR1. Oh, okay, so when you hit crash one, the metronome will run for one or two measures. You can set to one measure or two measures and press metronome button. Uh, I'm still not quite understanding that, but anyway, something to look into and pretty cool. I don't know if I'll ever use it, but if you want to, uh, you can figure that out. <laughs> so let's go here uh, to the next setting we have in the menu, which is record. Now, if we uh, press enter here, uh, basically uh, all you have to do is just hit a pad and it'll start recording. And what this does is just records your playing. The only thing is, is this only saves it temporarily. It basically saves it to RAM. So once you finish recording, uh, uh, you know, you can listen to it back, but as soon as you turn off the module, it's going away. So if you want to play it back and, uh, you know, record, save your performance, basically you would have to record it to a computer or something like that. I don't know why they did it that way. I kind of wish it would give you the ability to save it, uh, but it does not. 
So let's exit out of there. And then we have instrument level. And this basically allows you to change the level of each individual pad. And you can hit those and just adjust the level the way you want. And that's a nice feature. Uh, now, another thing that kind of goes with that uh, instrument level that should be in this same screen, but it's not. It took me a little while to find it. It's actually in setup. So let's go into setup. And that is panning. So if I go down here, actually, let's go to system. And then you'll see pad pan right there. So I just kind of want to show you that one at the same time before I get into the rest of these uh, menu items, because I feel like that should be in the other menu, but it, it isn't. For some reason, it's right here. I don't know why they did it that way, uh, but they did. Uh, but anyway, let's get back to setup. So let's start at the beginning. System. We have our basic, basic system settings here. We have LCD contrast, brightness, uh, power off, master volume limit, MIDI channel, uh, pad panning, we talked about that, and your firmware. The firmware, you're going to want to update this as soon as you get it. Mine's already updated to 1.30, but if you buy this module, you most likely likely will have to install that firmware update because uh, it actually gives you a lot of new features as far as dialing in the triggers, so make sure you update your firmware. Um, the product ID, you're gonna need that as well uh, when you go to register on ATV's website. Uh, so make sure uh, to note that down. And that allows you to download new kits and make your own. Uh, so make sure you do that. All right, let's go ahead to the next uh, menu item here, which is trigger. Now, I've had a lot of questions about this already. Like people keep asking me, how do I set up this type of trigger or that type of trigger? Now, there's no one way to do it. So I just want to get that out of the way. You're just going to have to experiment. And it's not that hard. I mean, most of mine pretty much worked without doing much of anything. Um, but uh, let's go through what you can do, though. So first off, total pad response. This allows you to adjust basically every pad. So I have mine set to plus three, which increases the sensitivity by three points for every single pad. Okay. Now, if we scroll down here to pad model, you'll also see the different types of pad models that you can select. Now, if I hit my different drums, you'll see I have a variety of different pad models selected. Some of them are kind of the same, uh, but you know they're kind of all over the map. Now, I have a lot of different triggers on this drum kit. I have a Yamaha kick drum trigger, a two box snare drum trigger, a Roland uh, PD-7 pad, and then D-drum red shots on my toms, uh, Roland VH11 hi-hats and lemon cymbals. So I was able to get all of these different triggers uh, to work pretty much flawlessly. And the way I was able to do that was just by going through the different presets and picking one that I think, uh, you know, was pretty close. And then I just adjusted my uh, sensitivity accordingly uh, to my playing. Now, you can see their pad model for the, the lemon crash is just the ADC14, and I did nothing to it. So that was all working good. And same with the, the pad model for the ride, it's an ADC16. Now, if you're looking for Roland names and Yamaha names and stuff in there, you're not gonna see them. It only gives you ATV pad types, but you can use those, don't worry about that. Just select which one you know kind of sounds the best. Uh, hit the drum and experiment and see which one is working the best. And then you know start with that and then you can adjust your sensitivity and everything else afterwards. Speaking of that, we have sensitivity, head rim adjust, hi-hat sensitivity, or pedal rather, sensitivity, and then hi-hat close adjust. I had to set my close adjust to uh, minus 20 to allow the X, or sorry, the VH11 hi-hat uh, splash function to work. Uh, that's how I was able to get that to work. But everything else works fine, and it doesn't seem to cause any problems set you know, that low. Now, once you get all of your pads you know, set up and triggering the way you want, then run the crosstalk cancel wizard. This basically basically runs you through every single pad and asks you to hit them uh, soft, medium, and loud, and then uh, runs this, I don't know, magic, and then cancels all the crosstalk automatically. You really don't have to do anything else, and it works really well. I'm getting zero crosstalk uh, between any pad. I have nothing. And I even have my ride symbol mounted to my bass drum, and I get no crosstalk. So that's really good. That works really well. And that's all you get as far as trigger adjustment. You don't get a lot.
but you can dial it in. If I was able to get all these weird pads and mix of pads to work, and it's working really well, then I'm sure you could get pretty much anything to work in this thing as well. All right, let's go to the next menu here, which is utility. And here's where you can back up and save, load kits, uh, import kits, and that is like when you download from the website or create your own, you're gonna use that. You could delete kits and you can format your SD card all from this menu. And then last we have help, and help just works by explaining whatever you have selected. If I press help here, it'll tell you what that menu option actually does. Okay, now let's get out of here and I believe we went through everything. So yeah, that's all. Now uh, let's talk about the rest of the module. Let's look at the back panel. Okay, so now you're looking at the back of the module and it's pretty simple, just like everything else is basically you have a uh, snake connection right here and you can't really expand the drum kit except for this one crash two input. And so that gives you a total of basically a five piece kit, uh, kick drum, uh, three toms, snare drum, two crashes and a ride and a hi-hat. And that is the maximum that you can plug in. Uh, you also have two outputs, left and right. You have an audio input, SD card input, USB connection, and standard MIDI connection, as well as your DC input. Now for the audio input, I like to use this little uh, uh, Bluetooth audio adapter, basically made for cars, but I plug that in there. So that way I can run Bluetooth audio into my module without having to plug anything uh, physical into the module itself other than that. And uh, that works really good. I, I did a video on that thing uh, before. All right, so that is all you get. It's very, very bare bones, but it's really nice. So now let's go over to the website and I'm gonna show you guys how to download kits and then install them in the module. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to the sound store uh, for ATV, which is store.atvcorporation.com. You're going to want to register your device first. Go here to the first time user section on the left, and then you can begin the registration process by clicking right here in the middle of the screen. And it's gonna ask you for your product ID. You can find that in the uh, settings of the module, which I showed you earlier. So just find that product ID, you can snap a photo of it or write it down, and then enter it in, uh, create your user account. And once you have all of that done, then you'll be ready to download and install uh, some drum kits as well as make your own. But before you do that, you're going to want to update your firmware. So after you create your account, go here to the firmware download section on the left, click that, and it takes you to the AD5 firmware by default. So you're gonna have to get the firmware for the XD3. And to do that, you just go here to products and go down to A drums and then select the EXS-5 or EXS-3 uh, because that are, those are the drum kits that the XD3 <laughs> module comes with. Uh, I don't know why they just didn't call the module the same thing as the, the drums, but they didn't. So once you get here, uh, click on support and then you'll see the uh, update procedure uh, PDF as well as the link to download uh, the firmware right here. So you just click, I agree, and click download. And then let's open this up so you guys can take a look at how to do this. So basically what you do is you download the uh, firmware, which comes in a bin file. Well, it actually comes in a zip file. So you have to unzip uh, that firmware onto your SD card and make sure you do it to the root of the SD card, like it shows you right here. So basically you're not gonna put it inside of any folder or anything like that. Then you insert the SD card into the XD3 module, hold down the back button and press the power button uh, to turn it on, or while you turn it on, and uh, it will open up the firmware update screen. And then the screen will show the current version and then the next version uh, that is on the card. And then you just press update to execute the firmware update. And if you want to cancel the update, press cancel. Don't power it off uh, while it's updating because that'll mess up the unit. Uh, make sure uh, make sure you're on a good power outlet, stable power outlet while you do it. Uh, when the update's complete, turn the power off and then turn it back on. The firmware is now updated. So it's really simple to do that. Make sure you do that first. And now let's go ahead and talk about how to download and install new kits. Okay, so we could close out of the ATV Corporation website and go back to the sound store. And now uh, you'll see a couple of things here on the left. You have the EXS kit creation. We'll get to that here in a second. 
Uh, but first, let's just go to the sound store. So just click this main uh, icon up here on the top left corner, and that'll bring you to the main uh, area of the sound store. Now, by default, it goes to the AD5, which is uh, ATV's flagship module, but you can just click on the EXS series right here. And now you'll find all of the other pre-made kits that uh, ATV made for you already. And I will say that all of these are really good. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 more kits. So they've added quite a bit. Um, so even just, you know, using these, uh, you'll get 13 new drum sets uh, to play with in your, in your module, which is really nice. I think some of my favorite ones are old school, uh, music city, vintage, four on the floor, and uh, I think those are about my favorites, yeah. I'm not crazy about the hard bop one, really. I don't think I would ever use that. But it's not bad, but I just I just don't really find a use for it. So anyway, to uh, install these, first you just need to download them. So you can click the download button. But if you want to hear it first, you can go to Audition right here. And then hear how it sounds. Okay, now what's nice about some of these uh, pre-made kits, um, I think Old School and a couple of the other ones have a China symbol on the uh, bow zone of uh, Crash 2 and then still have a Crash symbol on the edge zone. So that's pretty nice. And some of them have a splash symbol on the bow zone of uh, Crash 1. So it gives you a couple of uh, extra symbols to play with on some of these pre-made kits. Unfortunately, there's no way to do that on the kits that you make yourself. So anyway, like I was saying, say we want to download all of these, you just click download, and then let's just save as. I'm gonna go to my uh, desktop. Here I have a kits folder that I already created, and you'll see I already downloaded all these, so I'm not gonna save them again. But you just download them all to a folder, and then once you have that folder filled up, uh, you copy them onto your SD card. So it's pretty simple. So. Let's go ahead and show you how to create your own kit now. So this is really cool. You just go to EXS Kit Creation here on the left. And you can already see uh, the two that I created right here. And what we're gonna do is create a kit file and then just click Confirm. Now you just, first you select your pad type. So I'm gonna start off with a kick and then we can uh, well, basically, you can assign any sound to any pad you want. Uh, so if you can look at all of the different sounds right here, or you can go to the group uh, kick and then select from various kick drums. You can audition these. And I'm just going to be fast here, but let's go ahead and set that one as my kick drum. Now let's pick my snare. Go to snare drum. There's a brass snare drum. I don't think I've used this one yet in a kit of mine, so might as well use that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go through one by one. Tom one, go to the Tom group. Eight inch maple, let's set that. Now we'll go to Tom two. I'm just gonna set all these to the natural maple toms. And then Tom, oh, actually we, st we could have started with a 10 inch, but I think I'm gonna stay with the, the eight. So this is gonna be a higher tuned uh, kit. Now let's go to our hi-hat. A Pro Z, I'm not sure what that is, but A Pro Z, uh, Zildjian A Custom, maybe? I don't know, but I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna use it. So let's select that. Now let's go to our Crash selection. So 20. I'm assuming that's a Pisces 20. Let's audition that. Okay, that sounds good to me. So let's set that one. 
I'm just kind of flying through this. I'm not sure how much I'll like this <laughs> uh, setup, but let's go ahead and do Crash 2 now before we get to the ride, since I'm already on the crashes. And let's see, what's this one right here? 17 inch dark. Sure. Okay, let's set that. Now let's pick our ride. Go to the rash, uh, ride group. Okay, A Pro Z. So let's go ahead and select that. 20 inch bright sounding ride. Uh, this is gonna be a pretty bright, uh, high pitched uh, kind of kit, but that's okay. I don't think I've made one like that yet. So um, finally, well, actually, no, that's everything. Now you might've noticed you also have percussion group here. So if you want to assign a percussion sound like a tambourine or a wood block or a cowbell uh, to one of the other pads, you can do that as well. So now we just go to check right here and you can see it already tells me that I have nine out of nine selected. So that means I've selected all my sounds that I need. And then we give the kit a name. So let's just call this one bright kit and then click kit creation. Okay. And now it creates it for you and now I can download it and save it to my kits folder that I showed you guys earlier. So let's go to save as go to my desktop. and kits and save it in here and there we go so next step is to import that from my sd card onto the module itself so let's go ahead and do that oh yeah first let me show you guys how to copy it over to your sd card so i just took the sd card out of the module and in case you're using a desktop like i am and you don't have an sd card slot you can use a device like this this is just a uh, little usb uh, sd card adapter so i can just plug this sd card into here Plug it into my computer or drop it on the floor. Okay, and that just opened up. Let me show you guys. Let me switch my screen here. Okay, there we go. And so now let's just go ahead and look inside of what's in the folder. Now you can see my firmware was already here. That's where that goes uh, on the root of the, the SD card. But if we go inside here uh, to ATV, you'll see a folder called import. So open that up. That's where you're gonna put all your kits that you download. So let's go ahead and put in uh, that one that I just downloaded in there. We'll copy it over. And date modified, here we go, bright kit. So I'll just drag this into here. Now it's copying all that data over to the SD card. Okay, now let's just eject the SD card and take it over to the module. Okay, let's go ahead and insert the SD card before we turn it back on. But I don't think it actually matters though. I've, I've taken it out and put it in while it was on. But either way. <laughs> so let's go ahead and turn on the module. Let me zoom in a bit here so you guys can see the screen good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is just go back into our menu button here, the enter button, and then let's go to setup. And then we're going to go to utility and then import kit. Okay, so now you can see all of the kits that are in that import folder. There's bright kit right there. Now we just select that and then we press number five for import. Then I'll ask you if you're sure. Say yes. Then I'll say, please keep power on. Now this same process is done, uh, whether it's a kit that you built yourself or one of the ones you downloaded, uh, like the preset kits that you downloaded from ATV, it all works the same exact way. So it's really easy to do. And it takes uh, about a minute or so for it to import. Okay, now once this finishes, uh, what I think I'm gonna do is actually record myself playing uh, a little bit of this kit this one that I just created to one of the built-in songs on the module. So here we go.
All right, so the next thing we want to do here is test out uh, using VST software uh, using the MIDI connection, USB MIDI connection from the ATV module. I just have a, well, actually, let me zoom out and show you guys. I just have a standard uh, MIDI cable, USB uh, printer cable, USB B, uh, going from the module. Let me move the camera over here. Running out of the module into my MacBook. And I have Reaper open here, as you can see. Let me zoom back in. And show you guys it showed how it shows up within Reaper. It just says uh, ATV dash ATV electronic drums. And I just enabled the MIDI input. I'm not going to enable the MIDI output because there's no real reason for me to do that. And I'm going to click OK. And let's zoom out a little bit here. OK. And I already added a new track. So let's go ahead and go to effects. And I'm going to enter in Superior Drummer. Okay, and that's going to take a minute to load up. All right, so let's go ahead and open up a kit here. Let's go into my clean kits and let's just do one of these. I don't know. Ludwig Classic. I think that should be good. And then we'll hear how this sounds. All right, so within Superior Drummer, you can go in here to the Use Preset option. And I'm just going to select ATV uh, from this list, which is right here. And then 85 is all you have, but I think that should work. So let's give that a shot and then close here and close this. And let's see if this is working. And it appears to be. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, record and uh, we'll see how it sounds. All right, that's pretty much all there is to know about the XD3 uh, drum module by ATV. I think it's a really good module, but like I said, use what you have. Learn to use what you have before you buy something new. Um, anyway, I do really like this thing. As far as I know, there's only one place that you can buy these currently in the U.S., and that's eDrum Center, located in Knoxville, Tennessee, and you can order them through their website, which I did, and they had them for $100 off. Uh, probably about a month ago, which was a really good deal. It was $2.99 uh, with free shipping and no sales tax. So that was an excellent deal, I think, for this module. The sound quality is really good. Uh, it has a lot of features, even though it's bare bones, but everything that it has just works good and it sounds good. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Follow my links down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. That helps the YouTube algorithm uh, push my videos out a little bit more to everybody. And uh, once again, thanks for watching, everybody, and happy drumming.